praise God for To him and God, we're thankful. We
serve a good God, give him praise right there.
Say what it's Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, y'all, sing it. Every generation. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, come on, sing it for yourself. Sing it for yourself. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. I'm so glad about it. Say it. shall confess. We honor the Lord today in the beauty of holiness and, and we, we simply come to lift up his holy name. I done cried a river this morning. But there are tears of joy. Amen. I'm grateful today. Well, it's the day I was born to serve. Amen. And oh, how wondrous is the name. I remember the day that, that I didn't, I said, Lord, I'll do anything but that. And he kept on calling my name. So I stand today, 42 and brand new. I'm grateful to all of you that have come to share. Y'all bear with me this morning. I'm, I'm going to try to move through. It's, it's, mm. So when I told Sister Candace McKinney that my, my goal was not to just cry all day long. <laughs> But I didn't already fail miserably at that. But my niece texted me early this morning, and my brother's daughter says, she just said, happy birthday. 
I love you and I admire you in so many ways. And the bottom fell out. Because my response was, there's so much work to be done on this young soul. But thank you for the encouragement. Because my heart breaks this morning for my sister in love because it was their wedding anniversary. Oh, but I bless the Lord. God is so good. If you agree, clap your hands in here. Come on. To our visitors, we want you to know that you are welcome. And we hope that any time the Spirit of the Lord leads you to come this way, that you will feel welcome to come. And I want to recognize my family in the back who have come. And I didn't realize it was my birthday, and they, they may have come to celebrate because of that. Uh, but I'm so glad that they're here. Amen. Will y'all just stand up for me? Amen. Yeah. And so, you guys have met my auntie before. It's my mother's sister. I think this might be the first time you meet my uncle, my mother's brother. And, and he's a minister of the gospel. And, and uncle, you're welcome to come sit with us. But I know that you, you may have to tip out. So, but yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. And so y'all met Jarvis last week. So this is Jarvis's dad. Amen. Uh, and, and my cousin Aaron and, and his entire family, amen. We, we bless God for all of you. Thank you. It, it, it does my heart good to know that you come to trust me to pour out food today. Because at least two of them back there changed my diaper. <laughs> and now they come to hear a word from the Lord from me. <laughs> That's funny to me. <laughs> but I'm grateful for you. To our visitors, we want you to know that you're welcome. We also have uh, Sister Charlene Gray Morris. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. All the way from Jamaica. Amen. God bless you. And I, I know she's visiting with her sister, Sister Marsha, and, and Sister Marsha, we're grateful for you because, man, because of God in you, my hand reaches to Jamaica now. And I'm grateful for that in places that I never thought. And Ruby going to be trying to talk to you about getting us to Jamaica, but <laughs> wait till I can afford it. <laughs> I want you to know that you're welcome. Mount Zion, are you in the house? Yes. Mount Zion, are you in the house? Yes. Repeat after me, visitors, visitors. Saints. saints, friends, friends. Online, audience. online audience, welcome, welcome. To, Mount to Mount Zion. Come on, give the Lord some praise in here. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. It is always so wonderful to stand here and see you all beautiful people. I just love it. Okay, so... Responsive reading, page 571, the resurrection of Jesus. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. 
And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All together. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And that came from Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Word God for the people of God. Good morning, Mount Zion. These are your morning announcements. On Monday, April 17th, 6 o'clock, the WMU will be meeting in the FLC. On Saturday, April 22nd, from 1 to 5, there will be a Healthy Kids Day. This is sponsored by the Cleveland County Health Department. There will be face painting, mini golf, balloon art, food truck, giveaways, and more, and it's free to the public. Next Sunday, April 23rd at 5 o'clock, Deacon Ordination Service for Brother Amos McClooney. Is Amos, Brother Amos here today? Okay. Moderator Michael Hill will be the speaker. We'd love to see each and every one of you out. Our Sunday school is started for ages 12 to 17, and that starts at 8.45 each Sunday. There are other few announcements on the back of your bulletin, and we welcome all visitors to Mount Zion Baptist Church. We did have a few to come in. Um, D. Roy and Carol Parker, and she said they've been watching us online. Where are you? D. Roy and Carol. Thank you for coming. Also, Darren and Portia Hancock. They're here visiting with us today. And we welcome everyone. And thank you and have a wonderful week. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. How many of you know that God doesn't take vacations and he don't call in sick? Amen. So the God that we serve is working all the time, even when we don't see it. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy, O oh God. And we thank you that you more than sufficiently have given us the ability to live here on earth a, a life filled with blessings, even though it's challenging at times. And so, Lord, we come to you this morning as I come as an intercessor, to lift up, to pray for not only this church, but every church that's open in your name. Lord, I ask that you would empower us with the filling of the Holy Spirit that we might go out into the world and make the impact that you declared for us in your word in Acts uh, chapter 2 of the book of Acts. And so, Lord, we just want to honor you this morning, even as we go through and into our worship service, Lord. And I thank you for the pastor that you sent our way, Pastor Davis, oh God, even as his 
birthday is today that we celebrate his birthday, Lord. And we ask that you would strengthen him and empower him to do what you've called him to do. Protect and keep his family, Lord, as only you can, that you might receive the glory and honor and praise, O oh God. And Lord, this morning I lift up families, Lord. Would you help to unite the families? That, for we, we need this that we might be empowered to live and to be strengthened and strengthen our communities, oh God. So strengthen parents, oh God. Give them the wisdom that they need. The wisdom empowered by the Holy Spirit, Lord, to raise up children in today. You said that train up a child in the way that they should go and when they're old they won't depart, oh God. So we know that we can't do it by ourselves of our own accord, but by your power, but by your power, oh God, Lord, we can raise up our children in a way that pleases you. And Lord, I lift up those, uh, even as it rained partially this morning and yesterday, I lift up those that might have slept under a bridge, oh God in an abandoned house, in a field. So Lord, let us have compassion, even when it seems like compassion isn't deserved, oh God. But we didn't deserve the same compassion that you gave when you sent your only begotten son to die for us while we were yet in our sins. So Lord, help us to remember them and help us to not become hard-hearted. And some, Lord, went to bed last night with the clank of a door of a jail cell. Lord, help us to remember those even, Lord, guilty or innocent. Lord, that we might have compassion and mercy and even forgiveness, Lord. Use us to your glory, O oh God, that many of them might be called into your kingdom, O oh God. Help us, Lord, for we can't walk this walk alone. Lord, we need you. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we just want to honor you this morning with everything that we do in this place called the sanctuary here at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Help us every song that we sing, every word that's spoken, every sermon that's declared, that it might honor and give you the glory that you deserve. So Lord, we just bless you, we honor you. We give you all the praise for your worthy. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen and amen. God bless you. simply created to honor him for who he is. It's a real simple song.
Anybody going to bless him? Anybody going to bless him? Worshippers in the house. Created to give you praise. Glory to your name, God. I thank you today. Oh, you've been so good to me. you brought me. Hallelujah. When nothing else could help love lifted me. to your people.
Help me today, Lord. I just want to stay right here at your feet. Help me today. Oh, glory to your name. I am your servant. I will do whatever thou commandest me. Feed your sheep today. Like only you can. I honor you today. With the first fruit of my increase, I honor you today. Have your way. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, glory to the name of God. <laughs> you can clap your hands. It's, it's in order. Oh, mercy. You ever been in a place all you want to do is thank you. Because when you look back over it, you see that he's kept every promise. And things didn't quite look all the time the way you thought they should or the way I thought they should. But he kept his promise. <laughs> to our visitors that don't know me, I'm a worshiper. And I don't care where I am. Whether I be on the mountaintop or I find myself in the valley. If the enemy that has me captured in the valley don't like worship, he gonna let me go. I get it now. Uh, Paul and Silas when they was there in that jail, they couldn't be quiet, Pastor. <laughs> because they said, even though I find myself in these stocks, God is still worthy to be praised. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. There's a word from the Lord today. Stay with me, Brother Elroy. Look with me today to the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter. I'm going to try to get through this today. Sister Wanda, we need some more tissue in the pulpit. I done used both boxes this month. <laughs> You know, I posted a meme this week that said, in worship, I often cry. And for the longest time, I thought I needed to pull myself together because of the capacity I had to operate in. But I'm learning that I'm not concerned with that anymore. Because I don't ever want to become numb to the idea that God has been good to me. I don't ever want it to be cliche when I say, thank you, Lord, for the ways you've made. Hallelujah. I don't ever want it to become a numb feeling that I can't celebrate how he's brought me through this and brought me through that. I don't ever want it to become a, a melancholiness that... that I look and see what God has brought me from and, and, and I can't stop in the midst of life and, and praise him right where I am. And so if he wrecks me over and over and over again, I'm all right with that. Mm -hmm. 
Help yourself this morning. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost moving in here. Ah, it's like peace like a river, they say. Book of Matthew, 28th chapter. We're going to read verses 11 through 15 and then 18 through 20. If you have it in your Bible this morning, I'll bear with me. I'm in a place that Peace abounds. I'm in a place where God said, if you ask me anything, I'll pour it out. And my faith says, I know you can do it. Hmm. book of Matthew trying to get this but there's a release happening right now and if you've been waiting on it you 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 ought to just grab a hold to it (laughs) don't nobody know if they wasn't there they wasn't there and so when your release comes Sometimes you just got to act like it ain't nobody there but me. When God begins to minister to your heart individually and says, I know you've been through this. I know you've been through that. But look, I still got you. I never left your presence. Hmm. Book of Matthew, verse number 11. It says, as the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say that Jesus' disciples came during the night and while we were sleeping, they stole his body. If the governor hears about this, we'll stand up for you and you won't get in trouble. Verse 15 says, so the guards accepted the bribe. They said what they were told to say and their story spread widely among the Jews. And they still tell it today. Verse 18. So Jesus came and told his disciples, and if I can use a, a, a transition word, meanwhile, <laughs> Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. May it be seed sown in good soil. Bring forth the harvest harvest for which it was planted. Amen. Ushers, you may take your seats. Repeat after me this morning. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word. I'll make it a lamp unto my feet. And I'll make it a light unto my path. I'll hide its word in my heart so that I learn not to sin against God. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I want to share with you this morning, just for a few minutes, the narrative the enemy wrote. 
if you look at this passage of scripture in the latter part of uh, Matthew, you see the enemy writing a narrative. He's writing a narrative because family, what we see here is, is that we have an enemy who despite the fact that he has been defeated and Christ has been victorious over all things in above and beneath the earth. What we see here is an enemy that will not quit. Do I have a witness? Some of y'all done experienced him. We see an enemy that will not quit. And in spite of the fact that people have witnessed the enemy's defeat, the enemy is so self-absorbed, understand this, he's so self-absorbed that he is willing to continue in the lie rather than face the fact that he's been defeated. And don't look at nobody. Family, the enemy we fight is relentless and he's so willing to save faith that, that he would rather go down with a sinking ship than to admit that he's been defeated. He would rather burn in a lake of sulfuric fire than to humble himself to the defeat that has been delivered to him by our Lord, your Lord and my Lord. Family, you don't have to look at nobody this morning, but there is still remnants of this spirit. And it exists among us even in this very day. That, you know, that spirit of, of just keep quiet and don't say nothing and nobody will know. And it, it, it was us that stole all the church's paper supply and we don't have to buy none at home. That, that, that spirit of I'm, I'm going to talk against everything and every idea that is presented to the church unless it's my idea. That, that, that spirit of, of, of we can't allow the people to know that we are not in charge. So tell whatever lie that has to be told, withhold whatever information needed to be withheld so that we can stay in power, push our agenda and keep the people under our control. Do I have a witness? Does it sound familiar? Family, it's the spirit of, of, of we can't spend no money unless I want something. <laughs> Don't look at nobody. It, it's that spirit of this is mine, mine, mine. And ain't nobody taking it because I've been the chairperson of this committee for 35 years and I got to do what they got to do what I say. And here are some of the thoughts at that these demeanors. And some of us thought these demeanors and characters were of God all this time. We see in the text this morning that that. Even though Christ had risen and he had been given out all authority and power had been given unto him, the, the powers that be said, wait a minute, he did what? No, you can't let that get out. So this is what you're going to say. And it says that they took the bribe. Leads me to my first point this morning, family. God spoke to me this week and he said that we have to learn to trust our encounters, and our, our experiences with God. We got to learn to trust it that we were there when he said access granted. We got to learn to trust that he was, we, we were there when he touched us and made things what they needed to be. Even if our enemy don't want to accept it. If you look at the scripture this morning, verse 11, again, it says, as the women, they were on their way and, and some guards, they went into the city and told, they told the leading priest what was going on, what had happened. And get number 12, verse number 12, highlight that. It says, a meeting with the elders was called. When the enemy start getting together with his people and having meetings, you better know you hit the nail on the head somewhere. When the enemy starts to concoct the plan against little old me, against little old you, from nowhere North Carolina, nowhere South Carolina, all of a sudden you're going to launch an attack on me. <laughs> and so they decided, they say, well, we, we come together, we're going to get him a bribe because they was there. 
People will believe the encounter from them because they was there. Verse 13 says, and they, t- they told the soldiers, you must say this. I came to tell you this morning, family, there's an entire campaign that has been launched against the body of Christ. And way back in the scripture, the campaign was launched by the enemy. And because the enemy wants to break us down and have us doubt that the resurrection of Jesus is real and, and, and the, is a real thing and therefore the resurrection to life, your resurrection to life of a life of righteousness must be a fraud and therefore null and void to what you're claiming. There's a whole campaign launched against it. I got to teach it a little bit this morning. But family, we must learn to trust our encounters that we had with God. And that by his stripes, I am healed. And the person I used to be, I am no longer. We have to learn to trust that. Because the decisions I made long ago does not negate who I am today. Because Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Tell somebody, trust the encounter that you had with God. See, this is why you got to trust it because people want to know how it is that you used to be standing around a fire barrel, passing a bottle with sinners, but now because of Christ, you stand at the altar giving men and women the plan of salvation. Am I right about it? They want to know how that, how that, how can that be? But the scripture says, Christ said, I make all things new. Family, I came to tell you you got to trust the encounter because men want to discredit your current position because they, they only want to see you in the darkness that you used to reside in. Am I preaching to somebody this month? Because get this, in the dark place, you look to them. Am I right about it? But now that you have been resurrected with a new heart and a renewed mind, you no longer look to them because we found the Holy Ghost. And all that used to be empty is now being filled and their days of holding you hostage and holding you to this thing that you used to be attached to. Or their days of holding it over your head. They're over because... Now you've been made free. They no longer have somebody they can use, abuse, and confuse. I don't know who this is for this month. But family, they want to discredit your hard work of praying and fasting, your diligent effort to make it to Bible study, Sunday school, because there is a hunger now, a desire inside of you now that cannot be explained because your taste and value for the world are slowly dissipating because we finally found, Pastor Harris, that joy that the old folks spoke about when they said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. They wondering how you got there. And they wondering how somebody missed the assignment because they were supposed to keep you chained down. Supposed to keep you chasing after things of the world and now you looking for abstract things of God. And they wondering, well, when did his desire change? When did she begin to seek righteousness? And, and, and she can't be this new creature. I remember when she was this or that. I, so she got to stay that person. So she don't pass me. Hmm. Family, we got to learn to trust our encounters and our experiences with God because I came to tell you that your encounters and your experiences with God, they don't warrant an explanation for your, to your enemy. They don't warrant you to try to have to explain to your enemy why you passed them and why you can't hang with them no more. Why Friday night ain't dedicated to the club. Saturday night ain't dedicated to the club. And why Sunday morning has been dedicated as a time of worship. You don't have to explain that to nobody. 
Sometimes in this life, we get so busy trying to explain to folk why we're who we are. Well, God said, I called you out with a purpose. And I mean for you to do just that. If somebody wants to learn how to be, if somebody wants to learn who I am, tell them to come on, welcome. But you don't have to explain to them that, no, I don't want to hang out all night long anymore. No, I ain't chasing women no more. No, the bottle does not dictate to me no more. I've been set free. (laughs) The Bible says who the son set free is truly free indeed. Came to tell you, family that you don't have it don't warrant an explanation for the world God gave us these desires it was his spirit that solidified us to be who we are I don't need you to understand nor do I care if you are willing to try because there when he brought me out I was there when he lifted me. I was there when he saved my soul. I was there when he made me whole. I was there when he brought me to my breakthrough. I was there when he changed my life. If you can't believe it, oh well. If you can't receive it, oh well. I've been set free. Some of these folk walking around here, they can't find nothing positive to say because they can only remember you when you was on wrong street. And they can only remember you that day that you done them wrong and treated them bad. But I came to tell somebody that it's a new day and I'm praising the Lord that all that's within me. And tell your neighbor that used to be a secular song says the band played on. Too many people want you to stop your song. They want you to stop your song of praise because they want you to come back down to their level and and be down there with them and get dirty with them for a while so your song don't play as loud as it used to. You better turn it up and quit listening to what they got to say and blast it. Turn the bass on 10, turn the treble on 10 and move the speaker sweat to your ears. Hmm. They, they, they said that, that we can't let this get out, Pastor. What you mean he don't, he, he ain't going to the gentleman club every Thursday night no more. Don't look at nobody. Yeah. You found that water, one dollar bills. <laughs> Have mercy. What you mean his desire is gone for the taste? Well, how how did this happen? How did y'all let him get loose? There's a book called The Screwtape Letters and, 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 and Satan's name in the book is Uncle Screwtape. Wormwood is, is the nephew. And Wormwood's job is to assign a demon to every individual in the earth. I've given y'all remnants of this before. And one part in the book is by C.S. Lewis. Write it down. You might want to read it. One part in the book, Screw Tape Tail Worm, where he said, bring us something to eat or be eating yourself. (laughs) All that time, Wormwood had been been luring you to Satan so he could could eat that righteousness out of you. That's why you feel empty on the inside when you had him. Them them fights and heated discussions with folk. When you walk away feeling empty, it's because Satan robbed you. Or that joy that lives on the inside. Because we allowed him to get us down on that level where we want to fuss and cuss with folk. That's why you feel empty because that spirit of of, of Rob has pulled your joy out. The band played on. Family, the second point this morning, we got to know that we know that we are not who they say we are. We are the definition of what the scriptures describe. Scripture says, if you've been made a new creature, you knew. Uh Verse number 15, it says, so the guards accepted the bribe and they said what they were told to say. 
their story spread widely among the Jews, and they still tell it today. This is why the, the, it's so confusing whether the gospel is, is this or whether it's that, because the lies are being spread. And they're being spread on, on, on every hand. But we got to be smart enough to know that we're not who they say we are. Why would we allow somebody who has crucified our Lord? Why would we allow somebody who crucifies us on a daily basis to tell us who we are? I'm about to make it real personal for you. In Romans 8, 14 through 17, it says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. So if that's what God says about you, why is it that other people get to call you something else? For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we be also glorified with him. Family, I came to tell you this morning, I'm, I'm halfway there, that the enemy then and now didn't want people to be empowered or inspired by the life of Christ due to the uproar that it causes when people begin to stand up for righteousness and demand that its leaders do right by them. They didn't want that, nor do they want it today. If Jesus tore the veil, get this, if Jesus tore the veil, then the religious leaders of the day had no real validity anymore. I came to tell you that you no longer had to see the priest to get your prayer through. <laughs> you didn't have to call Pastor Davis no more to get him to pray for you because you can pray for yourself now. And, and, and that bothered the religious leaders because Jesus was teaching people how to pray without going to confession or paying the fee. Yeah, somebody caught that. Jesus was teaching that, that we will no longer have to live in fear of one another, but we can live in love for each other. Am I right about it this morning? Family, if we would exercise, listen to this, I'm about to make it real personal. Let me make it real for you. If we would exercise our right to vote, we can become a government for the people, yes. by the people, of the people. And I probably said it backwards. If we would exercise our right to vote. Let me tell you some of the lies that the enemy has told. Some of the narratives that has been painted in this nation alone. Now, you saw the narrative that they painted after Jesus rose and went to Galilee. They said, don't let it happen. Let's tell a lie. Make sure that don't nobody believe that. Here are a few narratives that have happened in this nation. Same spirit. This nation alone. The narrative is that black Americans are the most violent citizens in America. Here's the truth. There is a disproportionate number of black Americans who are convicted of violent crimes in the United States. According to the data from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, black Americans are incarcerated at a rate that is more than five times higher than that of white Americans. This can be attributed to a variety of factors. This is from the study. This can be contributed to a variety of factors, including sy systemic racism and bias within the criminal justice system, as well as socioeconomic disparities that affect black Americans at a higher rate than all other racial groups. Hmm. You got the narrative, you got the truth. Here's another narrative. Because of our violent and crime-infested nature, Black men would rather go to prison than to raise families and to be fathers to their children. That's a narrative that's been painted by this nation. Here's the truth. One study conducted by the United States Sentencing Commission found that black male offenders received sentences that were 19.1% longer 
than those of white male offenders for similar crimes. Similarly, a study by the Vera Institute of the Justice found that black Americans were more likely to be incarcerated and receive longer sentences than white Americans for drug offenses, even though drug use rates are similar across all racial groups. (laughs) Y'all hear me this morning? These are the narratives that's been painted. But this is the truth behind the narrative. Narrative, because of the violent nature of our communities and the citizens of them, the police had to militarize in the 80s and 90s, granting incentives to drug crimes and giving grenade launchers and M16 to local police departments. They had to do it because of the violent nature in our communities. Here's the truth. In 2021, as of April 15, black Americans accounted for 25% of those killed by police, despite making up only 13% of the U.S. population. Hmm. This is the study. This disproportionate number as black Americans are roughly twice as likely as white Americans to be killed by the police. Family, it's a proven study revealed that the war on drugs did not become more extensive, that mass incarceration was the only option. But the incentives that were offered for drug charges are what drove up the numbers of arrests for drug crime. The incentives that they offered if you arrested somebody for drugs is what drove up the number and got all our black men, most of our black men incarcerated. The narrative is that blacks are the poorest people in the nation because we don't value home ownership or investing in the American dream. But the truth is there's a thing called redlining. Redlining is to refuse a loan or insurance to someone because they live in an area deemed to be a poor financial risk. Get this now. I'm making it personal for you. So in other words, the bank and the loan institutions will not give loans to people living in these poverty-stricken environments due to it being deemed a bad investment. Well... By 1948, there's some factual information here. There were so many housing covenants nationwide that would not allow black families to live in new thriving neighborhoods. It was against the law. And a realtor would lose their license for breaking one of these covenants. The results were that blacks had to live in these areas that banks had redlined. So we, get this, so we could not live in the new neighborhoods with the other cultures we couldn't and we couldn't get funding in our own communities get this y'all and I'm gonna move on the FHA the federal housing uh, authority the same everybody paid taxes to support everybody Black, white, blue, green, or purple. The FHA underwriting manual suggested and even decided to separate neighborhoods by cultures by putting highways right through them. 1968, the Fair Housing Act gave blacks the right to buy homes they could no longer afford. So by 1968, they made a law to where we could now live in those neighborhoods and buy the house, but by now the housing market had gone up so high that we could no longer, no longer afford those houses. Amen. Due to the rising costs of suburban living, again, kept out, empty promise. I came to tell somebody, family, that it is a narrative, a whole campaign that's been launched against the body of Christ. And I gave you some examples this morning just in this nation, how one culture has been targeted and kept out of so many things. But I came to tell you as I make my last point, take my seat. Meanwhile, Jesus is giving commands. Meanwhile, Jesus is is given the great commission and and, and he told the disciples, he said, I've been given all authority in heaven and in earth. 
Therefore, your job is to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, even into the end of age. I came to tell somebody that a narrative that the enemy wrote, it will not pass. Family, this is where we find out that the narrative of the enemy, that the narrative of the enemy is writing has no authority. Because Jesus declares that all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. In other words, Jesus understood that all that was being plotted against him and the church that was about to be birthed, Jesus said it does not matter. It's time for you to go. I've given you a commission. It's time for you to fulfill the duty of the Father. I don't care what's going on around you. I'm not telling you to sit idle on your hands. Get up and do something about it. Vote at the poll. But now we understand that Jesus is saying with all the things that's happening around you, you everything that's going on and everything that seems to keep you out of this and out of that I'm commanding you to go I don't need you worried about what you can't get I'm gonna supply your need I don't need you worried about the places that you might not be welcome into I'm gonna be with you I need you to just go and 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 somebody might ask me this morning pastor well how do we fix the issues aforementioned going on in this nation we simply have to turn from po protest to policy it's that simple we got to get some policies passed and in order to get the policies passed family we got to vote I, listen I don't care if you wear your shoes out standing in line in order to get the policies passed, we got to vote, which means that we have to absolutely beat down the polls. Yes. I know I say it all the time, but if we really want to send a message, family, our vote is our biggest protest. Yes. There's a narrative that's been painted all right. back then and even now to keep the children of God out of the places of promise. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I want to share with you this morning. Jesus declared that we are to make disciples of men. And, and it made so much sense to me this week. And, and last night as I was polishing it at about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Brother Jason, I, I sent that message by 2 o'clock this morning. Because I, I, I'm, all, I'm polishing the whole time. And God said to me last night, he said, we must make disciples of men to eradicate their hearts because the evil, vile heart of men are making the whole world sick. He said we're making the whole, they're making the whole world sick. So we become the spiritual doctors. Get this. This is your assignment. It's not only to make disciples of men, but understand this. We have become spiritual doctors sent to the earth to heal other men and women by discipling Satan from their heart. Yes. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost because of the power thereof is always going to outlast the lies. Came to tell somebody this morning, family, that the religious leaders of the day persecuted Jesus and his followers because what Jesus offered was absolute freedom from a world of oppression. I came to tell you this morning to be encouraged because there's some principalities in this current world that wants to keep ethnic groups in conflict with one another because a nation free of systemic racism within the criminal justice system with policies and laws to keep us divided and socioeconomic disparities and implicit bias amongst judges, prosecutors, and other uh, uh, criminal justice professionals, a nation or uh, or a whole world free of these things is a world of equity, equality, and absolute freedom for all. There's a narrative that's been painted. Family, the narrative by the enemy that has been in motion for a long time has made the whole world sick. But I came to tell you it will not last. Because the word given by God, has sustained the test of time. Not only has it sustained the test of time, but it continues to grow in the hearts of men. 
And because the disciples are still working, I came to tell you and encourage you this morning that all you got to do, brother disciple or sister disciple, is stick to the script. You don't have to worry about what they're saying about you and the picture that they painted you to be the angry black man or the angry black woman. Stick to the script. Because it's the only way that we overpower the narrative. I came to tell somebody this morning that just like back then when Jesus came into the world, overcame the world and took it by storm because he came in with love and righteousness. He came in and began to show men and women how to really live. He came in and gave us something. He gave them something in that day that they had never experienced before. And because the powers that be felt like they were going to lose their position, they began to put measures in place to stop the word of God from going forth. Am I right about it this morning? I decree, decree and declare today that family they're the same powers that were working back then the principalities and evil that were working back then has also painted a narrative for your life today but I came to tell you that all you got to do is stick to the script what script are you talking about Reverend the Bible says that to go ye therefore into all nations making disciples of men what exactly does that mean that don't mean that I'm going to every hedge and highway and beating people over the head with the scripture but that means that I'm going the same way Jesus came I'm going in the name of love I'm going in the name of peace I don't care about the narrative they can talk about me and call me everything but a child of God they said they don't preach at Mount Zion always stirring up trouble well I heard a man in Congress not too long ago it said every now and then it's all right to stir up some good trouble because I came to be victorious. I came to spread the news of Jesus. I came to spread the love that Jesus gave back then. I came to spread that same love so that men and women, you and I, will learn to love each other the right way. We will learn to come together on one accord begin to do the work of the Lord begin to eradicate the hearts and minds of men so that men might be free I came that Jesus said I came that the world be condemned not so how am I going to condemn you and beat you down but Jesus said I came that the world might be free There was a narrative. They told them that this is what you're supposed to say. And I'm about to come down somebody's street. Every time that we cry injustice, they tell us, well, we've had a black president. This is a free nation. Hmm. But in almost every small town in America, there's a DA trying to get a felony charge on every young black man they can. But we're a free nation. We're a free nation, but we got brothers and sisters who have served their time been rehabilitated but every time they fill out a job application and check the box that they are a convicted felon there's a study that says that when you check the box your rate of being called back for that job goes down 50 percent 
There's another study that says if you are a person of color, it goes down 50 more percent. So your chance now is zero. There's a narrative that's been painted. And they said, we can't let them find out that, that Jesus overcame all of this with love. Because if they start loving each other, come here, black men. If they start to put their guns down, they throw away their ammo and stop killing each other and start loving each other. If you go back to of Exodus, could be Deuteronomy. When the Egyptian Pharaoh talks to another person, he said, they are more than we are. So we got to deal with them strategically. Because if a war break out, they're going to overcome us, overtake us. So let's put these measures in place so they can't move outside of these boundaries. Same narrative that was put in place for the children of God, the body of Christ, have been put in place for many of the, many of the people that look like you and I. Because they understand that if we would begin to love each other, if we would get to the point where we don't allow anybody to change who we are, we're going to give them the same response regardless. They realize that all their scare tactics, everything that they have used against us for so long and press their thumb down to keep us down, it won't work anymore. going out on a limb here. If we would decide to support the black business in time, the black grocery store, and y'all know I, I, I believe that it, it's deeper than the culture for me. I love everybody. But when you're a part of a group that's continuously oppressed, if you would link up with that group and say, hey, we ain't taking it no more. And begin to love each other. It don't matter what the narrative is. They talk about our Jewish brothers and sisters, but I admire them. You want to know why? I saw a, a, a clip that says from a Jewish brother. He said, if one Jewish brother making money, five making money. I admire them. You want to know why? Because they got a whole term called anti-Semitism. That if you say anything wrong in the direction of them brothers, you coming down for it. Now this is what's confusing to me. They got a whole term that stemmed out of the Holocaust. But there were 400 years of slavery in this country. And we ain't even got no term to describe what happens to us daily. Are you ready to stand up? Are you ready to destroy the narrative that the enemy has written? Because what it's going to take is, meanwhile, <laughs> While they're writing their narratives, the children of God going to work. Not concerned about their narratives. Not concerned about what they got going on because Jesus said, look, he didn't even address. Get that. He didn't even address the narratives. He knew what was happening. He didn't say to the disciples one time, all right, be weary of this because they're going to say that this didn't happen. He didn't even address it. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that we have to get to a point where we ain't even willing to address the narrative. 
but we're willing to work so hard to destroy it. And it's happening already. We're willing to work so hard to destroy it that it no longer has validity. They had a narrative. Even the day after Jesus rose, they said, we can't let this get out. Do you truly want freedom? Or are you okay just existing? I, I want to know the answer. Do you truly want freedom? Or are you okay existing? Because what Jesus gave the disciples, he said, you, you're, not on, you're not any longer going to be just existing. You're going to be free now. And not only that, but I need you to go into the world and make sure other people get free too. You receive what you say, man. We never like to close our worship service. I'll give you the opportunity to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. If that's you today, right where you are, in the altar of your heart. I believe if you pray this simple prayer, you can be saved. You can be born again. Now, if you want to have an intricate conversation on what that means, I'm, I'm willing. But I'm not this. I'm sold out. He's my God. I live by his principles and his ways. That's what it means to be saved. Nobody can argue that what he gave us teaches us how to be one with God. If that's you this morning, I believe you pray the simple prayer, you can be saved. Right where you are. If you're in the online audience, right in the, in the altar of your heart, repeat after me. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. Today I surrender all. I haven't always done everything right in my life. And, and some of us may not even know what it means to be saved. But God, I want to know you better. I want you to come into my heart. Help me to live in righteousness. Help me to love my brother the right way. I surrender to you. Your will and your way for my life. I confess I haven't always done everything right. I confess that I believe you died and buried resurrected the life just for me come into my heart I want to be new in Jesus name amen if you prayed that simple prayer family I believe you got saved I want to encourage you to get in the Bible believe in church that will allow you to operate in the spirit of God not the religion and the tradition of man but the spirit of God let it permeate your heart get into a place that allow you to grow you don't have anywhere else to go, we'd be glad to have you here at Mount Zion every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Join us on our worship stream if you don't have anywhere else to go. If you just need prayer this morning as we rest on our feet, come to the altar of your heart or you can come to this altar all over the room. If you're in the room and you prayed that prayer of salvation, get with one of our ministry leaders. Ministry leaders, raise your hands all over the room. Get with one of our ministry leaders so they can continue to give you the plan of salvation. If you just need prayer this morning, come to the altar of your heart. Amen. Come to the altar. The doors of the church is open. Whomsoever will, let him come. Destroy the narrative that's been made, that's been wrote, and choose righteousness. Will there be one today? If you know somebody who needs prayer in, your online, in our online audience, put their name in the comment line so our intercessory prayer team can pray for them all week long. If you know someone who needs prayer this morning, will you simply come and stand in for them? Prayer can reach places we can't get to. Will you come? Will there be one? Step out on the faith that's brought you safe thus this far. Will there be another this morning? If you simply want to come in and intercede for this nation, will you come?
If you don't got no other reason to come, come pray for me. <laughs> Boy, I would be praying day and night for that booger who lead me. Listen, make sure, Lord, that he keep the right heart and right mind. Bless him so he don't ask me for no money. <laughs> that was supposed to be fun. <laughs> Amen. If there be any more, please come. Don't let me sitting people down disturb. Just come. However the Spirit of the Lord leads you to come, will you come? If you want to be a member of this church, come to the altar. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come by way of baptism. Any way the Spirit of the Lord leads you to come, will you come? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Most holy and everlasting God, our Redeemer, we thank you today for all that you've done for us. Thank you that even though there have been narratives that were written in our name, they tried to write a narrative to destroy the story of Christ. And they tried to write narratives, narratives to destroy us. But oh God, we believe you to be strong. You said that all power and authority have been given unto you. So today we say thank you. We give you glory, oh God, just for being who you are. Thank you for every situation and circumstance that got us to where we are today. Thank you for this moment that we get to stand and declare your glory, that the enemy thought he had us, but we got away. Thank you, God. Oh, and we're here to give you glory. We're here to give you praise for the great and mighty things that you've done. Bless us. These are your children who are gathered at the altar. You know what we stand in need of. Supply the need according to your riches and glory. You said every hair on our head was accounted for. So we count it done today. We believe in you for great and mighty things. Bless all the ones that come for specific reasons. Speak to them, oh God. Speak to their heart so they'll be strong in you. And Father God, help us in this life as we prepare to the journey to get back to you oh God help us to be strong help us not to take on the spirit of hate and demise but help us to be strong enough that this world can't change our heart for you that we learn to love everybody the right way and help us to shift the narratives in this country so that systemic racism and injustices will be blotted out and obliterated forever. So all your children can be free. Help us to know that if, if one of us is uh, dealt an injustice, it's an injustice to us all. Help us to become strong in your word. So that we can activate the power that lives within us. To love each other and live freely. We give you glory today. These are your servants' prayers. We ask it all in the precious, holy, and divine name of Jesus. The redeemed of the Lord said amen, amen, amen and amen. Amen. If you come to join, please stay. Please stay put. Amen. Come on up. Amen. Bless you, brother. Love you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. So, thank you. This is the Tate family. This is James and Verna. I ain't never called you by your first name, Ms. Tate. James and Verna Tate, and they're coming to us by way of, of uh, letter, Christian experience. Absolutely. They're coming to us by way of Christian experience. And, and I won't tell you the journey but it, it's beautiful how one came from the West Coast and one came from, from up north and they met here in a center place. All right. Ain't that beautiful? Right. <laughs> and, and they're coming to us by way of Christian experience to be members of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Brother Deacon. Brother Pastor, I move that we received the Tates as uh, from my letter, you said? By Christian experience. Yeah. 
And once you all have uh, finished our new members orientation, that you'll receive the right hand of fellowship and become full members of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Amen. And that is a motion. It's been moved and properly seconded that we receive the Tates um, as uh, candidates for membership after the, um, the uh, new members classes. They'll be full-fledged members here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Um, all those, is there a need for, no, no discussion. All those ready to vote by saying question. question. All those in favor by saying aye. aye. Eyes have it and Satan has no voice. Amen. Amen. Jarvis. Amen. So Amen. Jarvis talked to Pastor Harris last week. Now, correct me. You coming to Mount Zion? Yes. Okay. As, uh, Amen. Amen. Mercy. My brother wants me to baptize him. <laughs> He's only three years younger than me, y'all. <laughs> My God. Ah, Deacon, I forgot what I'm Is supposed to say. Jonas, did you say Jonas? <laughs> Jarvis. Jarvis? Yeah. I uh, passed on right. that that we received Jarvis, yeah. Brother Jarvis, as a candidate for baptism. And once you finish our new members class and, and been baptized, you'll receive a right hand fellowship and become a full member of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Amen. It's been moved and properly seconded that we receive Jarvis Humphreys, my brother, my cousin, um, as a candidate for baptism. All those in favor, by, all those ready to vote by saying question. All those in favor by saying aye. Eyes have it, Satan has no voice. Come on, give God some praise in here. For our new converts, our new members, amen. And after going through the new members classes, the Tates and Jarvis will have uh, the, the right hand of fellowship here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. I'm super excited about what God is doing. Somebody get me, somebody get me that number next week of how many have come in the last three months. I want to know that number. So we can celebrate and praise God. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank, thank you. Oh, man. A birthday it has been indeed. Thank you, cuz. I love you, man. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's pray. 1147, my Lord. 1115 looked good. And it went right on by, brother. Ever. Come on, let's pray. Father, we just thank you today for the overwhelming joy that you allowed to flood my soul. Oh, thank you for loving me. We honor you today for what's been said and done in this place. Help us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. As we get ready to go our separate ways, help us to always stay in your presence. And Father, help us to never depart from you as we depart this place to serve. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide henceforth now and forever. The redeemed of the Lord said amen. Amen, amen and amen. Family, if these ministries are being a blessing to you, Please don't hesitate. Be a blessing to us. Find us on Give the Five Soul, whatever the Lord put in your heart to sow. And remember that we love you. God loves you better. This thing that you're going through, say it with me, is simply.
another day's journey. God bless you. Bounce. Mike Peace. Zach, one more thing before y'all leave, okay? By request of Sister Andrea Davis, we want to do something special in honor our pastor this right. afternoon. Being today is his birthday. So when we leave here, I will, she would like for everyone to come over to the Family Life Center and we're gonna have some ice cream and cake. Amen. Amen. Amen.